Welcome back. Let's continue talking politics now. In Imo State, the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA, has suspended Mr. Peter Ezeobi as the state chairman of the party over alleged financial misappropriation, embezzlement and high-handedness. The party has now inaugurated a 21-member caretaker committee with a mandate to reposition the Imo State chapter of ABGA and recover its lost glory in the state. The national leadership of the party says the decision to suspend the chairman is also to ensure that the forthcoming National Congress of the party is free, fair and credible. But the suspended chairman of the party, Mr. Ezeobi, has described the allegations against him as unfounded and false. The federal government has launched the enrollment of clients for the Basic Health Care Provision Fund in Oshun State. The program is being implemented to ensure that all Nigerians have access to quality and essential health care services without facing hardship. Primary health care is the very basic in health care provision structure, and the need to consistently pay attention to the sector cannot be overemphasized. The reason for this gathering in Oshogo, the Oshu State's capital, is to roll out the enrollment of clients for Basic Health Care Provision Fund, a program targeted at providing Nigerians at all levels with quality health care at no cost at the point of service. The Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, speaks on how the Basic Health Care Provision Program will benefit the vulnerable in the society. This facility will get money every month. And when they do well, I'm told the facility will get at least 100,000, basic. But why would they do more? When they deliver more women, when they take care of more children, they will get more money. Your state will benefit to the level of 960 million naira in the next nine months. For all the donor agencies who spoke, Oshu State deserves to be commended for being the pilot state for the takeoff of the program. The best long-term investment you can make is to invest in your people's health and well-being. It's therefore no surprise that the state was honored as the second best performing state and received an additional 20 million from the Saving One Million Lives program in January. The, the global financing facility of the world bank made available 20 million dollars to pilot the basic health care provision fund out of 37 states or 36 states plus fct only three states qualified or two was one of them the governor of Oshun State, Goyega Oyetola, gives the assurance that the state will ensure effective implementation of all the components of the programs. Workers' unions are expected to play their own role as stakeholders. We are positive that the implementation of this holistic approach shall deliver quality and adequate health care to our people. With this launch, the federal government assures that the program would also be flagged off in Niger, Katsina and Abia states, with immediate rollout in other 17 states and the federal capital territory of Abuja. If there's anything that at least everyone will agree on in different parts of the country is that the weather is extremely hot. Some go as far as saying that it's the hottest time in history. Our correspondent, Maria Lale Yusuf, went round to investigate and has this report. Almost unbearable heat. That's what characterizes the days and some nights. Heat is not new at this time of the year, but some Nigerians are quite sure it's never been this bad. Everywhere, especially north, they are complaining about the heat. It's too much. The weather is very hot. But as you can see this evening, it's a little bit cold, not as it used to be. We're still coping, we're trying to adopt to the system. It's quite hot. It's hotter than what we had last year and the previous years. You can see it's difficult to cope without the ACs. So even with the ACs, they don't seem to be working. It's not because they are faulty, it's because the environment outside is very hot. We visit the Nigerian Meteorological Agency to get some answers. Temperature has been on increase due to effect of climate change. And um, presently in Nigeria, we are experiencing heat wave. There's a reason why the heat seems worse every season. It's all about human activities. You know, burning of fossil fuels, thereby releasing carbon dioxide, 
and some greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These are the gases that trap the heat and prevent the heat from escaping. In 2018 was hot, and it was the hottest, one of the hottest ever recorded, as said by the WMO. And the predictions for 29 are not going remarkably different. The good news is that the condition is temporary and will eventually give way when steady rains fall. There are, however, fears that while the heat lasts, it could have serious implications for health. What are the symptoms they would have? They would have cramps, they will feel dizzy, lightheadedness. They can also be unconscious, they can even go into coma. If you don't have any ice packs around, just get cold water and try to reduce the body temperature first. If you don't have um, running water, whatever water you have, just use like a wet cloth and then dab around the face, around the body to try to bring down the temperature. Tree planting and less use of fossil fuels could reduce the heat while cross ventilation in homes wearing light color clothing, staying in the shade and drinking more water to stay hydrated could help prevent this heat-generated ailment. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. With just a few weeks to the end of his administration, the governor of Ogun State, Tibikun Ramosu, has assured residents that projects built for commissioning by the president will be ready in good time. The governor promised that the projects, which he refers to as legacy projects, are to make life better for the people in Ogun State. And one of them is the 250-bed ultra-modern hospital, estimated to be the best in sub-Saharan Africa. This month, President Muhammad Buhari is expected in Ogun State to commission some projects, which the state governor, Ibikule Amosu, describes as legacy projects. Ahead of the visit, Governor Amoso goes round to inspect 20 of the projects to ensure they're ready for commissioning. From one project site to another, the governor says this is necessary to ensure that they meet with specification. This 250-bed ultra-modern hospital is one of the projects built for commissioning. According to Governor Amosun, this is to discourage medical tourism out of Nigeria. Mr. President will be coming to commission all these legacy projects. So when he comes, they will come with the uh, Foreign Minister of uh, Health and all of those practitioners so that let them come and talk about it. Don't let it come from me. We need third party confirmation. So when they come, they will talk about this hospital. On completion, this hospital is projected to be the best in Nigeria. We have uh, a total of five theaters, and each theater is fully equipped with the LED light, the camera, the two pendant, surgeon and anesthesia pendants, uh, high-end equipment, table, anesthesia, machine monitors, and then this hospital have 10 bedded ICU, uh, have a fully diagnostic center with 1.5 Tesla MRI, to um, 120 slice CT scan machine, fluoroscopy machine, digital X-ray and digital mammography machine, and a fully equipped lab. Cases that are either to refer out of Ogun State or refer out of Nigeria can be managed in here. And we're going to be focusing largely on complex cardiovascular arena and cases and cancer management. The inspection tour continues to the city center, venue of the just concluded African Drum Festival. The governor is sure that these two will be ready, particularly the amphitheater, which the state government is handling in a public private partnership arrangement. 16 people have been confirmed dead following an accident in a Tukai village of Dambata, local government area of Kano State. An eyewitness confirmed to the Channel Television's Kano correspondent, Idris Jubin, that the accident involved three vehicles, a 406 Peugeot, a Volkswagen Golf, and a Honda Accord car. Only one out of the 17 occupants of the vehicles were said to have survived the crash, which occurred at about 7 p.m. yesterday. In a statement by the FRSC spokesperson in the state, Mr. Kabiru Ibrahim, 
The cause of the accident was overspeeding, which resulted to the loss of control of the cars by the driver. He said the golf car took off from Dara to Kano State, while the Peugeot car was coming from Kano when they collided at Tukai village. Some money was recovered from the scene by a police rescue team. Let's move to Enugu State now, where the government has kicked off its 2,000 cash or not smallholders direct market linkage program to improve incomes for small farm holders and retain profit in the local area chain. The program, which is in partnership with private investors, is expected to eliminate the activity of middlemen and strengthen cashew value chain as a huge source of industrial material to the state agroeconomy. Our correspondent, Ikiru Ajogu, has this report. Cashew, one of the agro-commodities in Enugu State, has over the years served as a source of livelihood to many families. For those who deal in just the seeds, a major challenge to their own specialty is the low pricing by middlemen who buy them off for exports. Today, the Enugu State government is addressing the issue with the introduction of the 2000 Cashew Nut Smallholders Direct Market Linkage Program aimed at improving income for small farm holders and ensuring quality control of cashew nuts produced in the state. As the girls and women engage actively in picking out defective cashew seeds here at the aggregative center, the young men see it, so it's packing and loading for exports. Uh, what uh, the government, the uh, Enugu State government, is trying to do with the cashew uh, business through the Enugu State Investment Development Authority is to give access to small uh, cashew nut smallholders to a direct buyer who is experienced in the business, who is ready to okay offer them real value for their cashew, value in terms of premium pricing, in terms of uh, teaching them, giving them enough knowledge because knowledge is power. The farmers were earlier trained in primary processing before bagging. Now they bring the nuts to this aggregated center and are able to sell at the premium market price as against transaction with middlemen who buy at very low rates. I pray that one day I will be like this company taking the, the goods to India and other countries like that so that I can have my own trucks that take the, company, the goods and become a big producer. Big dream for this cashew nut farmer. It appears the investors are listening and looking at making the state a cashew nut hub. The vision we have for the sector for cashew to be an economic hub for the state because there should be activity, economic activity around cashew, value chain approach. There is money in cashew, a lot of opportunity in cashew. So far, the government appears to have demonstrated readiness to strengthen the cashew value chain with the introduction of the improved seedlings with low gestation period. There is, however, need for effective supervision of the replacement of the old plants if this dream must be realized. Nkiru Ajogu, Channels Television News. Tech is working with a new agency, and VC tells us more about that and other stories on VC News. Welcome to Business News. The Securities and Exchange Commission and the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission have agreed to partner on the Competition and Consumer Protection Act 2019. In a statement jointly signed by the FCCPC and SEC, both agencies of governments will work together for the continuation of commercial transactions and market operations four months after action by President Mohamed Buhari. The app, which creates the FCCPC agency, is expected to begin the review of all mergers and other business combinations or arrangements to avoid distortions to the market. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act 2019 was signed into law by President Mohamed Buhari on January the 30th, 2019. The Central Bank has injected a total of $271.83 million and 41.14 million Chinese yuan each in the retail secondary market intervention sales and the foreign exchange market. According to the financial markets regulator, Friday's transaction is in addition to the $205 million pumped into the wholesale 
small and medium enterprises and invincible segments on the market on Tuesday this week. The CBN explains that 41.14 million Chinese won was targeted at payment of renminbi denominated letters of credit for agriculture as well as raw materials. Meanwhile, lending institutions recounting the gains of the Naira yuan swap believe that the contract has been a strong remedy for Nigeria's foreign exchange rate. An enterprise banking and trade finance expert, Mr. Ayodele Ojoshikwe, emphasizes the benefits of the transaction. For us, it's more pertinent that we add value to the chain. And what we have done is we've taken our clients to China to see some of our um, uh, off-tickers with ICBC. And we push better terms on pricing. So we've seen cases where we have particular clients that has been dealing with a particular supplier for over 15 years. And just by our intervention, he's been able to get a $100 uh, reduction package on, the, on, on his item of imports. That's significant. That's something he's never gotten in um, his 15 years of trading with our partner. And we're saying that when we're able to achieve this consistently, the customers will begin to see the value in using renminbi to trade. And whatever fears they have on the dollar, on their margins, we are able to mitigate by these connections. And let's look at stock performance at the equities market, which ended the week deep in the red as profit taken by investors outweighed their buy interest in four trading sessions. The main index dipped 1.78% to close the week at 29,212, while market capitalization dropped to 10.97 trillion naira each. But this was due to heavy sell pressure from the industrial goods sector, which lost 4.16%. The banking sector fell by 1.31% while the consumer goods sector slumped 0.29%. The share price of Japol Oil and Maritime Services topped a list of 30 gainers for the week. Gold Link Insurance recorded the heaviest load shed among 44 losers. Meanwhile, a total of 1.47 billion units of shares worth 15.49 billion naira in 18,092 deals were exchanged by investors, while the overall turnover was largely driven by trading in the shares of Transcore Cement Company of Northern Nigeria and Japan. And that's it on Business News. It's back to you, Melinda. Many thanks, Missy. Let's hope the stock market will be green next week. And still ahead on the news at 10. Rangers anxious to return to winning ways as they battle Aimba in Aba tomorrow after suffering back-to-back -back defeats in the Nigeria Professional Football League. That's in 14. Join us again.